In part one and part two of a song mixing exercise video series, I demonstrated where to download the multi-tracks and import them into a DAW, in my case, Cakewalk by BandLab. And in part two, we looked at the arrangement. We make sure all the tracks were all correct. And we also did a basic mixing so we can hear the song. If you haven't watched those videos, I will leave a link in the description and possibly a card in the top right hand corner. In today's video, we're going to go the next step. We're going to look at the static side of mixing a song. That means coloring our tracks, arranging them, putting them into buses to make it easier to mix. We're going to dive deep down into each of the tracks, edit them, remove any noise, and start adding some plugins to correct our EQ and add some compression. So let's get started. As you can see on the screen now, my mixing console is color coded. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. This makes it easier aesthetically. So it doesn't affect any of the sound or anything. It just makes it easier to see where all different parts are. And for all my drums, I've selected the blue color. And for my bass guitar, I have purple. All my guitars, yellow, and my vocals, green to stand out. Color coding makes it really easy if you have a big project. This is a very small project of 19 tracks, but there are projects could be anywhere between 29, 39, 69, or 89, or even more tracks. So color coding makes it easier to navigate and to see where things are at. Now the next step from color coding is grouping them, all of the different instruments, into separate buses. And as you can see in Cakewalk, all our buses are on the right hand side. Let me make it bigger. Here I have added drums bus in blue, my bass guitar bus, guitars, vocals, and my effects, in this case my vocal reverb that I added to start with. And then by default in Cakewalk you get a preview bus, metronome bus, and a master bus. So let me color my master bus I like a dread that can stand out. And if you want to know how to create buses, what's the easiest way? I do have several videos on the topics explaining the differences between tracks, buses, uh, auxiliary buses, uh, and many others available in Cakewalk by BandLab. I will, again, I will leave a link in the description for the Cakewalk playlist so you can follow that and learn how all that's done. And just to show you in this project, at the bottom here, as you can see, it says drums, 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 then bass and guitars over there and the vocals. And those are the buses that they're going to. So the audio from each of these grouped of instruments will go into the bus and from the bus, it'll go to the master output. This way, over here, we are doing micro adjustments to adjust the balance between uh, the different instruments different instrument parts in the, the drums case and for guitars the different guitar arrangements are being sort of micro uh, mixed and over here on the buses we are doing macro so we are just balancing all the different types of elements in between so if you want the drums higher bass guitars that's where we come in and adjust later on in the final stages of the mix and in case you are wondering why would I create a, a bass bus where it's only one channel. This is just a common practice that I have. Sometimes you may have more than one bass track. It could be a DI input, uh, it could be a mi several microphones connected to the bass guitar, the front, the back and so on. So it's just a, become a habit to create a bus even though uh, it's just audio coming from this channel into here and straight out. It's just a practice and a habit for future in case you do get multiple channels for the bass guitar or bass instruments. There could be multiple bass instruments. By the way, out of curiosity, let's have a listen to see how far I've gone with my balancing. I have added a few plugins already, which I will demonstrate and show you what they are a little bit later on. But let's have a quick listen of just a quick verse. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis 
Well, that's, you can compare from the previous uh, part two and now how much different there is. And what we need to work on first and foremost is the vocal. So let's dive in to the vocal track and remove all background noise on parts that the singer is not singing. This way, it will clear out some of that background noise that could appear within the mix. So this is our vocal track. Let's um, zoom in, right in, and let's just solo that one and have a listen right from the beginning. And this is the part we are looking at and trying to hear the background noise. You might just be able to hear. If you love somebody enough, you'll... Okay, so just to clean all of that uh, noise and headphone bleed and everything else, we can cut all that bit out while he's not singing. So I'm just going to go into the edit, right click on there and select split. Now I've got the split tool with the scissors, so I can come here and just cut that. And then I can press the delete and now that bit is gone. Not nice and clean. Now in between, I don't normally uh, worry too much because um, later on as a gate or expander, we'll take care of that. But anything which is much longer than it needs to be, I'm just going to select and delete. This clears out a lot of the background noise while the music is playing. And it doesn't have to be that accurate, just as long as you get rid of some of that background noise. And here is the end. And now let's just fade that in and fade it out and nice and clean. And that's the end. So that's pretty much what I would normally do for vocals as far as cleaning. And what we need to do is probably the same for our guitars because especially the beginning of the guitar let's zoom in to our electric guitar let me just unmute that one unsolo that one I meant to say let's click on that one and zoom in right at the beginning <laughs> Right, and then we can just sort of reduce that and do a fade in. Simple as that. And we can have a look right at the end. Again, it's a long fade out. And, and noise, which we probably don't need, all nice and clear. So I will go ahead and do that uh, to the other guitars as well that are in the mix and we can uh, get clean start uh, clean ending and all in between next let's have a look the most important element of the song in this case is the vocals so we clear out all of the background noise between the verses and the choruses and this is the original recorded material that we're going to listen and then later on, I'm going to go through each one of the plugins that I've used to enhance. So let's have a listen before and after, and I'll go through each one of the plugins. And all the plugins that I've used are free plugins that either come with Cakewalk or are free VST plugins. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... She'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. As we can hear the original recording, it's very muffled, it's very nasally, it's got boxiness, and sort of um, really, really uh, unclear. And let me turn on all the effects next, and let's have a listen what difference that made. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... She'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. 
Let's have a listen to that in context. But first. Well, she used to be a man, she said. She'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. And let's turn the box on. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. Nice, bright, clear, and all the words we can understand. It's not muffly anymore. Again, this is just our starting point. Later on, you, we'll always tweak a little bit more as we progress into our mixing and all the different parts and the elements of the song we start editing and automating. We may need to come back and tweak a little bit more, but for now, this will do. So let's have a look what I have done. First, I used TDR Nova. This is the free edition, and here, this is the first step of clearing the audio. You might find it really weird EQ curve here, but that's what is required. There's nothing wrong with using extreme to certain degree EQ to correct the audio. I've done a low pass and a high pass filter at 163 hertz. That's what I found that the voice becomes much clearer and all the muffled actually a bit go out. So let me just switch off all the others one and we can have a listen, see what it actually is doing. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... Let's bypass it. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... Now, all of that low end gone, now it's much clearer. And then on the second band, I've reduced 7.3 dB and I also have dynamic compression happening. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... Maybe about the dB or so compression there. Now, here is the interesting one that many people may not be aware of, that Nova, including the free edition, the standard one, does have upward compression or expansion. So, in the ratio, when you go below 1 to 1, in this case, 0.7 to 1, that means any signal that goes above the threshold will be actually be increased. Just watch out the screen here and you can see what I mean. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis So what it's actually doing is that it's keeping the EQ in re relatively about 3.7 dB gain at about uh, 3 kilohertz, but as the signal goes above that threshold, it's increasing it. So it's giving a little bit more dynamic to the sound, and it's like turning the EQ gain up every time there's a signal in that band range. So this is something that Nova can do, and many high-end EQs with compression will do. So if you didn't know about it, I'm glad you watched this, and now you learned something here as well. And then the final band is just a little bit of air, 1.6 dB at 11 kilohertz. That's what Nova is doing at the moment. Next, I have the Sonatus compressor. Let's turn it on. And this is a gentle sort of a leveling compressor. And I've got 5.4 ratio and 24 dB of knee. And here it's basically leveling all of the peaks into much more manageable uh, lower dynamics. So let's have a listen with and without it. So without it. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis We expanded some of the words which were muffled and now we're compressing it back into more balanced level of the audio. And you can virtually hear the difference that it makes by just using the two plugins. EQ to remove all the bad parts and enhance some of the missing audio content at the higher end, about 3 kilohertz. 
and then we are compressing the dynamics to bring the level up. Next, I'm going to do the pitch correction. And for that, I'm using the Open Sounds Grellion 2. This is the free edition. And I'm using pitch correction to gently correct the, some of the notes which are out of, uh, out of tune or out of pitch for the vocalist and to bring it in. Nothing major, nothing uh, too drastic because you still want to leave some of those emotions um, of the singer in there. This just helping out so it the out of pitch notes don't stand out too far. So it brings it right in. Again, I'm using the correction enabled at uh, about 50% and it's very smooth, nothing too drastic, nothing too fast. So you shouldn't really hear the artifacts here. So let's have a listen without it and then with. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say Turn it on. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say The last note that it's out, it's just gently drifting it in so it's not noticeable to the end listener. Following that, I'm using another EQ to balance out all of the compression that initially we put in as well. And here I'm bringing lots of brightness at about four and a half uh, kilohertz. Let's have a listen without it and then with. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis Now it's much clearer, much brighter and much more intelligible. The next is something you may not be aware of, this is available again for free in Cakewalk, is an exciter. Again, this is very similar to what we did in uh, TDR Nova, where we were dynamically increasing the top end, but this one is actually adding some harmonics at the top end, again, to make it a bit brighter as well. Let's have a listen without and with it. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say... She'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. That's how I got to Memphis. And as we can hear, it adds really high-end brilliance. And obviously this adds some sibilance, which is fine, but it gives clarity. And later on in the last plug-in, we're going to take care of that sibilance and do the final leveling. Last but not least, our plugin, again, a free plugin in Cakewalk by BandLab, and is the VX64. This is the vocal strip, the vocal channel, which includes a de -esser, compressor and expander, and tube equalizer. Um, it even has a doubler, which I'm using, and a delay as well, which I'm not going to use because I like to use reverb and delay in a as a, on a bus. And this is a fantastic plugin to use. So let's have a listen without it and I'll turn it on and we'll hear what the difference it makes. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis That's how I got to Memphis Okay, so we've taken care of the de -esser. We added a bit more compression. And here I'm also using the expander to remove some of the background noise, even in between the verses, uh, between the lines. And again, I'm EQing with some saturation, tube saturation at about 2 kilohertz again, because that's the part, that's the intelligibility that we need to bring up from this recording. And also using the doubler. So... I'll turn it on and off and you can hear what the doubler does. It basically, it tries to uh, do a double take and as if two singers are singing. So let's give it a try. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis Turn it on. That's how I got to Memphis so it gives wider vocal and fills up more of the space 
between the left and the right. So finally, let's have a listen uh, with and with it back again with all the plugins. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say she'd go back to Memphis someday. That's how I got to Memphis. That's how I got to Memphis. Well, I haven't eaten a bite. Let's have a listen in context. Well, she used to get mad and she'd say She'd go back to Memphis someday That's how I got to Memphis That's how I got to Memphis Before I finish off today's part, I just want to demonstrate one more free plugin that I use most of the time on my master bus and that is unlimited this is sonic anomaly and it's a great way not only to have a limiter at the end to stop all of a sudden signal levels going out and either damaging your ears because if you're listening on headphones or your speakers this will stop it so it's a great way to have uh, right at the end and I normally have minus 0.8 dB as uh, my top ceiling. And you can bring out the threshold and it will do compression. You can actually see it's a great sounding. And at the same time, it will give you some rough LUFS estimation as well. So let's have a listen and I'll adjust the threshold and you can hear how much difference it makes. This way you can also check your mix to see how it's sounding when you start adding limiters and compressing the master bus. And you can go back and forward, back and forward to see how balancing while you're keeping your loudness level at about uh, anywhere between minus 14 to a bit naughty bit of minus 10 if you really want to push your song. Well, that's it for part three. I hope you found lots of useful information in this uh, part on the series of uh, mixing a song exercise. If you have any comments, any uh, questions you'd like to ask so far in the mix, and I hope you are following as well, feel free to use the comment section below, and I'm more than happy to read them and answer if uh, I uh, need to, or if I can, to my best of my ability. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. That way you can follow up uh, next part on this series of mixing a song. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, everyone.